Hey y'all. On this episode, we're picking up right where we left off. At a friend's shop, trimming and fitting together all the tube that will make up the base for the Rev2 frame for the Willamette charger. For the last day or so, I've been building this chassis with my buddies David and John. I'm fortunate to count these two skilled fabricators as friends, because while I've never built a tube chassis from scratch, David has and was quick to lend his expertise. John is all about fabricating cool junk and finally got to use that laser we were talking about last time. The frame is coming together pretty much as planned, and we're half excited about how it's taking shape before us and half relieved that there haven't been any gnarly problems to work out. The center frame section is tacked together and square within a 32nd of an inch. The rear rails are trimmed and about ready to index. Soon enough, we'll be looking at the frame in its full length. It's setting up to be a very good day. While I cut the next pieces of the assembly, Dave got those rails roughed in place. This might actually be the most difficult part of the whole deal. See, you've got to set a five foot long stick of tubing perfectly flat and parallel while hanging loose in the air. The fixture blocks help a ton and work with the same stops and clamps we've been using up to this point. Still, I'm just trying to get this close to make sure that ends right. Math says that end will be right. It's a bump, bump, measure sort of deal, but the critical thing is that we're always measuring from the center of the main fixture table to place the rail so it matches the drawing. They're in the same spot relative to center. So this is the back piece that will cap the back here, and then it'll slide underneath. You can see that little gap right there. So I'm gonna create a dashed line here and let the bandsaw, taking David's note, let the bandsaw come down, create a little notch, and then this will be clear all the way from the rocker through to the frame rail, and then I'll create a little plate on the inside. Little detailed stuff like this can be a lot of fun and makes this a little bit more than just your average um, frame assembly. I suppose we passed that mark a little while ago. A little bit. Just a little bit extra we can trim. That's perfect. Like, like earlier, when we built the center section, once it's all clamped in place, there's not much left to do except tack it all up. Dave and I each work different sides, going slow to control for heat and warp. Hours passed, and we barely noticed it was now dark out. With the rear rails and center sections fully tacked, we just keep moving forward, literally. Tame for right now. Well, let's make sure the cross member is going to be where we want it before we clamp everything as well. The front frame is made up of three pieces yeah. and are the last to go together because the front cross member isn't in the same lateral plane as the center section. That's why we're bolting that fixture block to the table one inch lower. And about that cross member, it's a pretty slick piece of gear I picked up from Chris Alston's chassis works and is the core of their Pro Touring front suspension system. Are we going to 89.9? Yeah. If you're looking for .03, 80, and you're looking for 97. Yeah. 
Like the rest of the frame, it's a bent piece of 4x2. It locates the upper and lower suspension pickup points, as well as the mounts for the sway bar and steering rack, and all to the custom dimensions I specified. It's the first of several pieces from those folks who make legit race car gear in an affordable and very streetable package. So, I'm going to scoot this clamp over to see if the tube straightens up. As we trim and cope the front rails to mate up with the center section, this is where we had to account for the deformation that comes from bending rectangular tubing. The process stretches one side and compresses the other. And that just means anything that mates up to these sections needs to account for that radius. Oh, it's the definition. Yeah, that, look, that looks pretty good. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the distance we need it to slide. This is all because there is no perfect way to bend steel. By definition, the process induces stress to achieve a specific shape. So our challenge is to understand a process's advantages as well as its limitations and design accordingly. With the front rails trimmed and radius to match the center section, I marked the cut for the chassis worked cross member. Where does the laser fall? Inch, three eighths. I was reading whatever is on the left of the laser. Inch and a half. There might be some twist in this for the cutout. Too. Well, since I did this, I just took a bunch of stress out of it. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Let's just measure up to here. Yep. We'll get that with a cross member. Yep. I like it. So I'm saying it needs to come this way. Whoa. Hey, yo. There you go. It's inch and a half right there. Well, what we can do. John. Pull the laser out of there. Okay. I'm gonna put the block to this face mm -hmm. and clamp it mm -hmm. so we can pull the frame rail out so we can fit the oh, other side. Oh, maybe we're gonna make a new jig. Yeah. But that will put us back where square is. Yeah, we don't have to find it again. In my drawing, the front is 34 inches wide. So the 33 inch cross member notches securely in place. Yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. Again, it's all about making sure these rails are parallel and square to the cross member. So each side gets trimmed to the drawing and fine fit to the center section, making very small adjustments until it's dialed. We give John a hard time about his laser, but that thing proved to be handier than pockets on a shirt. And we were able to measure and quickly verify that the front cross member was square, not just to the table, but the central cross member we laid down way back at the start of the day. It was really cool to see these last couple of pieces click into position, knowing they were exactly where they were supposed to be. When the plan comes together. It's awesome. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. It was late. I knew this because while Harriet was previously content to follow us all around the shop and even play with John's dogs, she had now found a more permanent position on a moving blanket. That look means it's time for me to wrap it up. Our goal was to get everything laid out and tacked by the end of day one, and we pretty much got there, leaving the final few tacks for the Chassis Works cross member until we could triple check measurements in the morning before committing. John. There we go. See you, guys. See you, buddy. Go ahead. Let's go. Not being the type to ignore their pup for too long, right, we called well, it a night. We're gonna shut it down too. Uh, yeah. Oh, I get blue in the morning. I get blue in the evening too.
Okay, so where we left last night, uh, we were, these rails are supposed to be 34 wide from outside to outside. Yes, sir. And we had third, well, let's measure back here, because these are, you clamped these, but yes, yeah. as I recall, we were 30 and an eight. 30 and eight. And we're 30 back here. And we're straight up and down when you put the speed square on it. Yes. So, my thought, we don't have this squared or anything. There's nothing here that's causing us any grief. Nope. I'm thinking we'll unclamp this, pull the cross member. There's a little bit of relieving that we can do. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And, you know, if you feel the bottom, you should have a little gap on the bottom right here. It's pretty tight on this side. Is it real tight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. So then we'll just mark where we've got contact because yep. maybe you got some relief on the top. And we'll just try and take that 16 yeah. from each side and then we'll be able to cinch up and have a, a 30. Yeah. Straight back and forth. I pray, oh, oh Lord, put a, put a hard song on me. They waking up in the morning. They ain't blue. Still they can sing. Ready? Train tape. Oh. Train tape is zero. Check back there. Just, uh, I was actually under 30 earlier. I haven't been under 30 in some time. They're just fully intact. So let's think about this. Uh, I'm just trying to think of like what's to prevent us from tacking in the rails before we tack in the cross paper. Nothing. I was thinking that myself. Because I don't want to fiddle with the cross member and accidentally mess with the rail. Yeah. I was thinking that myself. All right. We'll just put the angle finder on here. Yep. And say that whatever it is relative to this, let's assume for right now, let's just say this is flat. This is 90. And that this is off by 10 so degrees. We'll set 10 degrees instead we'll of... set 10. Instead, instead of trying of this to do this deformed tube wall. Because that's put in with a fixture. And it's a machine part. And it's a machine part. So I think that's going to be truer than this tube wall. Yeah, I agree. We know there's a little twist in these, like that's two, three tenths of a degree. Yeah. So we can capture this one at six and then pull this guy forward to six. Yeah. Because yeah, we got to do two things. You got to, you got to. We'll have to set this at the correct, you know, parallel. It's square. Yep. Pick one side, and then this one. Actually, I did it the other way around. This is six. This one has to twist this way. So clockwise from your perspective. Yeah. That should be easy enough, though. I don't think it's gonna be hard. I got some big pry bars to say it'll be real easy. This small variation is probably due to how we have the cross member mounted to the table, and as it sits, I doubt it would show up on an alignment rack. But since we had the opportunity, we took full advantage and got this piece dialed within a tenth of a degree. Do this. All right. So, huge stick out. We needed to be able to do this number. And you can see from that angle, the upper control arm mount. That's what we needed to get into. Kind of simple, but you see this stuff all over Instagram and you're kind of like, well, when the hell do I need that? Right there, that's when you need these things, so. All that's left to do is weld. So we settle in for a steady burn. So you have me welded before? Yeah. Oh, shit. You are Captain Tigalot, for sure. I do like to. I like me welding. It makes me money. Last time, we talked about moments and how quickly they pass. 
This is another one. And if you've ever hung around with friends at the end of a project, uh -huh. you know exactly what this is. While juggling. If we're lucky, we get to have several of these over a course of a project. As we load the frame, I'm reminded of how this all started just a few months earlier with measurements and a sketch. This is what I'm chasing. That high quality fabrication and design is within our grasp. And with our friends in the right parts, we can build most of this ourselves. And about those friends, thank you to John for all the support and use of his shop. Thank you to Jimmy at MRC Fab for the very nicely bent frame rails and all the help dialing in my design. Thank you to Chris Sr., Lino, and Mike at Chassis Works. And a very special thank you to my friend, David Demois. Beyond mere help or expertise, I learn a ton from working with this guy. And I'm so thankful that he applied his talents to the project. Links for all these folks, as well as the welding and fab supplies, are in the description, so be sure to check those out. Thank y'all for watching, and until next time, take care. Shiner is sounding better and better as the minutes pass. Have you not had one yet? No. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't Maybe like one. Might you think relieve the okay? tension? Yeah. There's a lot of tension here, Dave. <laughs> you need to turn the block so you can clamp. Deal again. <laughs> you want to? You want to turn the the this? So you